How do I test my blood sugar levels? Okay. Well, there's many different machines on the market, and this is just one kind of machine. Um, this particular one, there's two parts to learn. One is how to get a blood sample from your finger chip. This is the Lancet device, and then this is the Lancet. I'll show you that as one part. And the other part is how to use the machine. And each machine uses a particular test strip. And you have to get the right kind of test strip that matches the machine that you're using. So first I'm going to show you how to use this Lancet device. This blue end is the cap and you first have to take it off and I pretend that I've got a cracker and I'm just breaking it in half. I pull this off and then in this hole is where the Lancet's going to fit. So I pick up the Lancet holding on to the round end. I put the narrow end of the Lancet into this white area mm -hmm. and I just push it in firmly all the way down. When it's all the way in, I now hold on to the round end and I turn this and it starts to loosen and then I just pull it off mm -hmm. and there's the needle. I now replace the cap back over top. This number can change by turning this dial. And what this number does is it changes how hard the needle will poke you. Mm. And the reason they have that is because everybody's skin is slightly different. Some people have very thick skin, some people have very thin skin. So to make it the most comfortable possible is you can actually change this. Mm. So it's not supposed to be torture. It's supposed to get just enough blood to run the blood test. Okay. So I usually started off on a lower number and then if needed, I might make it go to a higher number. So to set the spring, I hold this blue area and I pull it back with my finger. Mm -hmm. That sets the spring. If I push this button, that will make the needle poke it. On this end, there's a hole mm -hmm. and that's where the needle's going to poke. So I have to put my finger there. Mm -hmm. So I first get this ready, mm -hmm. then I'd make sure my hands were clean, so I'd just wash them underneath the tap with soap and water. I don't use to, need to use an alcohol wipe on my fingertips mm -hmm. because the alcohol will just dry my skin out and make it tougher and start to crack, which is not comfortable. So just washing it makes my hands clean. Um, it also warms up my fingertips, so I'm more likely to get an adequate sample of blood on the first try. One of the biggest um, problems that some people have is they poke their finger and they don't get enough blood. Mm. So when you're ready to poke the finger, some people what they do is they actually shake their hand like that and when they shake it, then their fingertips start to get very pink and the blood's gone down towards the fingertips. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, what another person might do is they might actually push the blood down from the elbow area mm -hmm. all the way down to the tips of their fingers mm -hmm. and their fingers get very, very pink. Mm. So preparation helps a lot. So get the fingers ready, pull this down to set the spring, put the finger next to the hole and push the button. When you push the button, it'll poke you and you'll get a drop of blood. So that's how to use the finger poker or the Lancet device. I don't want to do that part yet for real. I'm going to go over to here to show you how to use the machine first. Mm -hmm. So over here's the machine and this is a, a bottle of test strips. Each bottle has what's called a code number on it. This one has code number 22. And so I want to make the machine match what number I have on this bottle. Mm. So I take, open up the lid. What does that mean, code number 22? When they make up the test strips in the, in the lab environment, mm -hmm. the chemicals that they use change slightly from batch to batch. Mm. So I liken that to being like a, a money, like dollars. So if you had a Canadian dollar and I had an American dollar and somebody else had an Australian dollar and somebody else was the banker, they need to know what kind of money you have mm. to give you the right value. Mm. And for you to get the right value for your blood sugar result, you need to tell your machine which code number you're using. Oh, okay. That's called coding or oh. calibrating can also be called. Oh, okay. So this particular meter, you do need to tell the machine which code number so you get the most accurate value for your blood test result. Some other machines in the market, they've deleted that step and there's no coding needed. So for this one, when I take out a test strip, 
you can see this end has a striped end, and this end is where the blood's going to go. When I push this striped end into this area here, that will automatically turn the machine on. So I'm going to push this striped end in, all the way in, and the screen will light up. Now you can see it says C dash dash. So it's waiting for me to put in the code number. The arrow button's on here. If I push the arrow button, mm. it changes the number. So why don't you push the button and get all it to number 22. 22. Yeah. Great. So you've got it to number 22. That number flashes a couple of times, and then it stays set in the memory. Okay. The next screen that comes up, you can see there's a drop there, and it means it's ready for your blood sample. So when you see that symbol, mm -hmm. then you're ready to get your blood drop. So you would wash your hands, mm -hmm. and then you'd set this spring, and now you're ready to poke the finger. Would you like me to do that for you, or do you want to do that? Prick my hand, or just, mm -hmm. uh, just hit it right there? Yeah, if you push that button. Okay, and this has already been set? Right. That'll make it poke. Okay. So if you have to reset it, do you want to try that? Pull that down, that resets it. Okay. And try poking. There. Okay. Good. Perfect. Most people find that if they put their fingertips together where their padded areas touch each other, that's mm -hmm. mostly where the nerve endings are centered. Mm -hmm. So if you poke there, that tends to hurt more. Okay. So instead, if you poke anywhere around the edges, either side of any finger and even your thumb, you can use that. Okay. Okay. It hurts less? Yeah. The side areas hurt less. Oh, okay. Okay. So if we were going to poke your finger, we go, we get this set. Go to the side, hold it just gently to your fingertip, and then push the blue button. Pull it away, and then we're going to push the blood up towards the hole. Wouldn't even hurt. And there's I the sample. We'd have to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and now we just touch the drop of blood to the end of the test strip. The blood sips in automatically, and then it automatically counts for five seconds, and at the end gives us a sample gives us your blood test result. Hmm. Oh, it's 5.3. 5.3, healthy. Oh, okay. So I showed you how to use this particular meter and this particular Lancet device, but there's many different meters and different Lancet devices on the market, and some people find one works better for them versus another one, but off, and often people will try a different one to see what works best for them. About 5% of the people who run blood sugar checks they don't like to use their fingertips to get a blood sample. They say their fingertips get sore, or they might be a pianist who just don't want to use their fingertips, or a guitarist, but there's different reasons that people might choose to not use their fingertips. Mm -hmm. Instead, other people use mm -hmm. what's called alternate site testing. And alternate site testing means that rather than use their fingertips, a person might choose to get a sample of blood from the base of the thumb here, mm -hmm. from the side of the hand here, mm -hmm. from the upper arm here, and from the upper arm over here, and even from the thigh area. So alternate site testing is, is used for some people. It often takes a lot of practice to get enough blood from that alternate site. The reason people use it is because it tends not to hurt as much um, as, uh, yeah, that, that's usually the most common reason is they just don't want to use their fingertips and it, it, you, you don't he feel anything at all. I've done several tests on myself when I've done this. But it does take practice, and um, to, to use an area such as the upper arm, outer arm here, the first thing a person has to do is they have to really, really rub the area, and that gets the blood going towards the surface of the skin. Another thing that they do is that rather, for this particular Lancet device, it comes with two caps. Mm -hmm. There's a solid blue cap, and there's a clear cap. So people would use the solid blue cap for if they're using their fingertip. The device comes with a second clear cap, and that's so that when they're going to get the sample of blood, they can actually see how much blood they have accumulating at the top of the skin. So it's mm -hmm. for a visual inspection right there. So a person, if they were going to use this device, they would set it usually to the very hardest setting, to number nine. They would prepare the lancet device by pulling this back to set mm -hmm. the spring. Then they would rub the skin get the blood towards the surface of the skin, then they'd hold this to their skin, push the button 
to poke their skin. And then they use a pumping action. Pump it up and down, up and down, up and down until they see an adequate sample of blood accumulating. Once they see the blood there, they can pull that away from their skin. They take their prepared meter that has the test strip in it and they just touch that to the drop of blood right there. Mm. So the advantage is with using an alternate site test is you tend not to feel the poke at all even though you've set it to number nine. Um, the other thing is that it allows your fingertips to be more sensitive for whatever it is that you might be doing. Mm.